guys, thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of In the Kitchen with Caitlin. Today, my good friend, Melissa Wolf, will be joining us. She is a flywheel instructor. And to keep with the theme of wellness, we're cooking quinoa stuffed mushrooms. A nice, meatless way to getting your protein for the day. So, let's get started. So, to get started, you're gonna have your baby portobello mushrooms and you're going to get some stems off of them because they come with stems, that's how they grow on the ground. And so we have this fun trick. Melissa actually taught me this trick. It's like a light switch. Yeah. So Melissa, take it away. You just push it a little bit forward, just gently, and then right to the back and it'll click right on out. Look, Easy. Empty. And now you have a little cup ready for the goodness we're about to make. Yep. Ta-da! My favorite things, yeah. mushrooms. So let's get a few of these. We'll just put it there. It's all right. The cleaning crew will come in later. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And we did a few of these before, so we didn't bore you with unclipping mushrooms. But now you know how to do it, just like we know how to do it. And now it's time to start mixing our stuffing, because that's what they call stuffed mushrooms. So while we mix things, um, we can chat. So Melissa, right. um, tell me. Flywheel, tell us yeah. about, what is it? Flywheel is a boutique fitness studio. So just um, grab and dump. Sure, we just dump in all this in here? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we have both indoor cycling, oh. and we also have a fly bar program, which is body strengthening and conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, I teach Flywheel, which is our indoor cycling program. Mm -hmm. um, cycling class is 45 minutes or an hour. Lots of great music. We have this great technology system um, that gives you the benefit of being able to track your progress week over week. So rather than, or class over class rather, so rather than going to a cycling class and being told by an instructor, you know, just make it a little bit heavier, go a little bit faster, we actually have these, this technology system that allows you to see exactly how fast you're going and how heavy you're riding on the bike. At the end of the day, it creates this number so you can actually find out how many calories are burned. So you can eat as much of this food as you want, and at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to see how much of it you've burned off. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, that's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. So you can cook everything I make, eat it all, and then go ride it off at Melissa's class. Exactly. Please come see me. You can actually bring food. If you cook this at home and if you bring it to my class to feed me some of it, you're going to be my favorite student. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we're, we got to break that up a little bit more and we can chop, chop it up. So let me grab a, a quick little cutting board. And maybe grab a knife so we could chop up our herbs a little smaller. Sure. And then we're going to do um, two cloves of the garlic. Great. And I'm going to mix this guy over here. So how did you, what, what inspired you? You just woke up one morning and be like, you know, I love riding bikes. Let me teach people how to ride a bike that doesn't move. So. I, yeah, no, I did actually. You know, that's what all my parents' hard work went towards when they taught me how to ride my first tricycle is this is what it's amounted to. Um, no, I mean, so I was actually in hospitality management for the past almost 11 years. Um, I was manager in restaurants and nightclubs here in Las Vegas and Chicago. Um, and then became a general manager of an Equinox Fitness Club because I really wanted to pursue fitness and management and thought, well, the skill set is there, so yeah. I may as well manage a fitness environment. Um, great company to work for, lots of fun, great job, mm -hmm. but not quite as fulfilling as I would have liked because I still wasn't actively engaging in fitness. I was really yeah. still at a desk job. Excel yeah. spreadsheets and all that good stuff. And to some people out there, I'm sure you love Excel sp spreadsheets. It's not my thing. Um, yeah. I love loud music. I love fitness. So I wanted to teach. Um, so I kind of blindly sent an email out to Flywheel mm -hmm. um, saying that I wanted to teach indoor cycling. Mm. They emailed me back. I went for an audition. And now I'm doing it. And I can honestly tell you, despite, despite it being, I would say, a, a difference in lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, both financially and just overall wellness, this is definitely the best career move I've ever made in my life. I'm so happy waking up in the morning when people ask me if I have to work. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time saying that I'm going to work because it doesn't feel like I'm working. Mm -hmm. It's just fun. Who complains about working when you get to sit and listen to music all day and build playlists and then ride Spin a it out. bike? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you came to class. You've I seen did. Yeah, I fun, had to right? get <laughs> class and I can firsthand vouch. She kicked my butt. <laughs> But it was the best possible butt kicking I could have ever hoped for. It you was can say awesome. other word. No, I can't. This is a family <laughs> show. Um, she kicked my behind, and it was a lot of fun. And 
Oh my gosh, I was sore the next day, but the best <laughs> kind of sore, like the good kind of sore. And I, I like to think of myself as in shape, so for me to be like kind of walking like I got off a horse the next day really is a testament to how hard she works you oh, and pushes you. I did my you. job. She did, she did, you did your job. <laughs> I needed assisted stretching the next day <laughs> after your class. So if you want to work off any of the butter in this recipe, just hit up a flywheel class. You're yeah, please. You're all set. Absolutely. Specifically, Melissa's flywheel class. Yeah. But if you're not in New York, you can go to another one. We'll understand. Yeah, we've got tons of studios actually all over the United States. Um, we are also in Dubai and London. Um, so anywhere you're traveling, you can actually. Dubai? Yeah, in Dubai, right? You could spin it's in Dubai. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can You can take cycling classes, you can take fly bar, all this good stuff out there. What's fly bar? This is one thing, because like I've heard of like some bar workouts, but I think it's different than what you're trying to explain. So tell me what yeah. this is. So it's body strengthening and conditioning. Um, you do it on top of a yoga mat. It's very Pilates based. Um, there's one song throughout it that's really choreographed with some more dance moves in it. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you're working with really light weights and repetitive movements, mm -hmm. um, that will kick your butt for sure. And as a complement to the cycling program, I think it's really an amazing workout. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, both of us being runners, yeah. I can honestly tell you when I started doing fly bar a couple times a week, it took my running to a whole new level. I, wow. My pace got faster, I stopped with the injuries. If you've ever had you know, IT band soreness I'm or patellar tendonitis, right you should hop into a class because it's gonna strengthen all the muscle groups that really cause those weaknesses that cause that pain. Yeah. Um, it's just such a good program. I'm so in love with the combination of the two. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing to be able to work in an environment where you're working and you can also get your workout in. And that's really been my saving grace, I think, since I started working there, is having the opportunity to work out all the time. Yeah. So for those of us who, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm pretty active in the side, but for those of us who have not really explored the wellness side of, or the wellness for those who have not really explored a wellness <laughs> lifestyle yet, or yes. those of us who might be just dipping our toe in the pool, you know, the newbies. In a what, swimming pool, like to swim laps? In the pool of fitness in general. <laughs> I have been swimming a lot lately. Okay. But to dip our toe in the pool of wellness here, what's like um, some words of advice about getting started? Because I know that firsthand that there is such a thing as jumping in too fast. Absolutely. Um, jumping in too fast is a problem. <laughs> You'll surely get injured. However, the great thing about an indoor cycling class is that it's re really your workout. So you can, you know, the instructor's always gonna give you, we'll give you a range um, of the numbers of your resistance, which we, our word for that is torque. Um, it's got a cute little letter Q at the end of it. It's, it's a fun word. Tor yeah, it's really cute. Torque it's just fun it to up. say, torque. Torque it up, exactly. Torque it up, torque it out, you know. Um, oh, we'll I, give you a range. I took the class. <laughs> I know, you know, you're so well versed already. <laughs> Caitlin's a pro. She's actually going to start teaching at Flywheel after we finish filming this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> It's okay. Back to going in slowly. <laughs> Back to going in slowly. Since it is your ride, you can really adjust your workout and it can be your own. If you can't keep up with the numbers that are being given, and that's why we give a range. So there's there's a lower end of the spectrum and a higher one. You can challenge yourself a little bit more, but you're going to start to feel out what you're able to do. As far as getting into the wellness world, if you haven't done it before, the hardest step, I mean, as you know, it's the same with running, especially you know, any in the winter exercise. time, yeah. any exercise is the hardest part is literally getting your foot out the door. So if you leave your apartment, your home, whatever it is, if you get into your car, you get onto the subway, onto the bus, start walking, you've already accomplished the hardest step as far as your workout goes. Mm -hmm. um, so once you, once you start walking towards the place, mm -hmm. you're pretty much in the clear. So that's really the hardest part. And then moderation, I mean, I get addicted to wellness things pretty easily. Uh, but I mean, if, if you had to have advice. If you had to have advice, yeah, I'm okay that it's fitness. Right. Um, I mean, I, it's something that, it, since the classes are only 40 minutes, 45 minutes long or an hour tops, mm -hmm. you're really, I mean, 45 minutes is a great amount of time to work out in. So it's not like you're going crazy. There's a time limit. This, the class starts and the class ends, and there's a time that's accountable, especially when you it holds you accountable. Yeah. Um, especially when you find an instructor that you really love. Um, if, it's, if it's not me, they're amazing instructors that we have on our list. We have so many good people mm -hmm. on our staff. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to find somebody, and a lot of times it's kind of like the idea of why people have a personal trainer is because some people really do enjoy working out, and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. But if they have an appointment with somebody, 
that's the person who holds them accountable to showing up to being there. So I find a lot of people, especially at Flywheel, are really, they're loyal and they're dedicated to an instructor, not just because they love the style of the class they teach, but because they're the person who holds them accountable because that relationship they build with them because of you know mm -hmm. the, the social interaction they have both in and outside of the studios, they feel accountable to showing up to class in the morning. And that's if, if that's what it takes for you to get to the gym and work out, mm -hmm. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, that's how I do it. Now, I know just because we're friends that a way that your students keep in touch with you and your teaching schedule is social media. So yes. tell our viewers about like how social media plays a part in your whole um, flywheel fitness circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I post everything online, whether it be pictures of what I'm eating. I also love to cook. Um, so I post what I'm eating. I tag it with fly fuel because what keeps me going in between classes, before, after, um, all my music. I absolutely love music. 16,000 songs on my computer right now. Uh, literally, 60, I had to get an external hard drive to handle them all. Uh, <laughs> I absolutely love music. So I post my playlists, and a lot of people will look to them afterwards. I post them on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, my Twitter and my Instagram handles are I am Melissa Wolf. It's pretty, pretty simple. Wolf with an E. Wolf with an E, yeah, M-E-L-I-S-S-A-W-O-L-F-E. So it's I am Melissa Wolf. So you can find all my posts on there. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you're gonna have to deal with a couple of really cute pictures of my dog too. Sorry. She's really cute. <laughs> Izzy's really cute. <laughs> Izzy's really cute right? really she cute. would eat all this up. <laughs> she Izzy would, would crush this food. <laughs> She'd be killing. Oh yeah. <laughs> she ate my dinner last night before I got to it. Oh my god. <laughs> but you'll have to deal with her on my Instagram, but you'll also get really cool stuff about flywheels. Since I am, I'm a newer instructor, um, so I do have a set schedule, but I also constantly get substitutes uh, assigned to me, so you can follow my schedule on there as well. I always post it, and feel free to find me on Facebook. I love talking to people on social media. Um, it's just fun. I think that social media, the impact that it has on this, this career field. Huge. Yeah, I mean huge. People find, not just in this career, even in hospitality management, people feel I feel like these days social media is such a huge thing. Mm -hmm. When you're able to have personal contact with somebody, not just through email or text message, when you let somebody see a little bit of your outside life, not just what you're doing for business, mm -hmm. they feel a little bit more connected to you and that, that's a further reason for you to be the one that holds them accountable to showing up, to be healthy, to work out. Right, they because be when they feel life. connected to you, it's like, you know, it's not just that you're their fitness instructor, it's almost like you're the Sherpa in their wellness journey. Yeah, yeah. and you're a real person. Right. You become a real human being. <laughs> That's why you do it's, guest spots on your friend's cooking show. Well, it's really hard. I mean, I think sometimes I did it, you know, when I first started taking fitness classes, I kind of, I put all these fitness instructors up on this pedestal, and there are fitness instructors who are absolutely amazing, and they're still, they do other things. They're not just a fitness instructor. They make really cool food, or they take really cool pictures of places that I've never been. You know, you become a stalker. I'm kidding. You don't become a stalker. <laughs> So you're all welcome now to Just stalk, stalk me. Melissa yes. at I am Melissa yeah. Wolf on Twitter and Instagram. Find her classes, see her dog, yes, and see the cool things that she cooks. Because that's why I've been asking her for a while. I'll be like, you have to be on my cooking show because <laughs> I get a little hungry looking at your feed. Oh yeah, I love and cooking. I love the cooking show. <laughs> Especially baking. Baking is my thing. You. Oh, oh. There was this time that there was brownies that had cherry and truffle in it that... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Chocolate truffle cherry brownies. And I do it all actually out of a toaster oven. I don't have an oven. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I don't have an oven. I cook it well, that's why you're going to have to come here. We'll <laughs> bake for real. <laughs> in the big kid oven. Yeah. So you do, like, easy bake oven recipes at your house? <laughs> okay guys, it's not a toaster. It's my Easy Bake Oven from the big, you guys remember the pink cardboard box from when we were little? That's actually my dog's crate, is the old pink cardboard box. And yeah, I actually bake an Easy Bake, no I don't. I, I bake in like is a Proctor toaster? Select like, toaster yeah, oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, no. I, so. You can make a lot of things in a toaster oven. There's a whole cookbook actually um, about things that you can cook, like full on entrees using only a toaster oven. It's like oh, yeah. single or double serving at max. You're not cooking for your whole dinner party, but. Oh no, I cook for up to 12 people in my toaster oven. Holidays, I've done a turkey in there before. You just pull the turkey apart. Right, right, right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they make like mini turkeys? I should search. I don't know. <laughs> what is that small bird? I, my mom always jokes and calls it pigeon. Pheasant, the really tiny one. What? The small, small bird. 
Not Cornish. It's a smaller quail? than a cor quail. 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 Because then there's Cornish hen is small too, usually, right? You can, yeah. You can fit that in there. Well, there's also things like turducken, which is well, also that's huge. Like, that's huge. But turducken is a turkey I mean, inside a duck inside a chicken. Chicken. Well, but it's all stuffed inside no, each inside other. Inside of the turkey. Is I guess the outer yes, level, right? Yes, yes, because that's why the tur, and then there's it. So it's the turkey, the duck, the chicken. Yeah. So we'll make that next year for Thanksgiving, okay? You and me. Done. We're gonna polish it off by ourselves too. Stay tuned for next year's in the kitchen with Caitlin Thanksgiving episode. Oh yeah. Where Caitlin and Melissa conquer the true duck. It's probably gonna be bacon wrap too, just FYI. <laughs> Hi, so here we are at In the Kitchen with Caitlin, right near the Intrepid, and we're gonna talk to... Hello, my name's Tony. Um, my name is Ryan. And we're gonna chat with Tony and Ryan about their food dishes. So, tell me, what is your food dish? Well, I come from uh, Canton from China, um, which is the um, north part of China. And uh, for, for Canton people, we usually go to um, I don't know how to say that in English, but we call it yum cha. Yum cha, it's um, what we do in the morning. We eat breakfast in the restaurant. We serve like um, all different kinds of um, Canton um, dishes. Uh, yeah, which is the, um, where, where, where we are um, famous part of the Canton food. Cool, do you know like what some of the ingredients might be? Well, they have a lot of ingredients. They include uh, pork, uh, chicken, uh, beef, and then um, shrimp, yeah, I mean, they made it into like all kinds of like uh, small dishes and they serve it uh, with the, the cart. They like, they push the cart around and uh, if you want something to eat from the cart, you can just ask for it. Yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, I, I don't know how to say those um, names in English, but we, we made it into like a small dishes, like, and then we put it all in the cart and they, they just push the cart uh, around the, the restaurant, you know, around the tables. Yeah, if you see anything that you like, you ask for it, and then, yeah. So it's kind of like a tapas size serving, you'd say? Like small individual serving, or is it like a larger plate? Yeah, like a, a small plate, but like a small like small uh, serving size. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. How about you? Oh, we, we just come from the same place, so yeah. <laughs> is there a holiday dish? Holiday dish? Like a... Uh, when we New Year, we, we make some like dumping, you know, and like May, we make some like uh, use the zhong, the zhong zi, you know? Yeah, that's use some ye zi, like, uh, cook some like rice, sweet rice, oh, and yes. then we. Sticky rice. Sticky rice, yeah. And we um, make, make it like, like a kind of like um, a, a rice, like wrap, you know, mm -hmm. with sticky rice. I mean, I'm sorry, I, like, I don't know how to translate that into English. It's okay. Yeah. In China, I have like many story and then many food come from the story and so, and then many different places, we have the many different cousins. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, that's great. Thank you guys so much. Hi, again, in the Jones family backyard, I am here with... Alex Emart. And we are going to talk about fooditions. So let's just start with some basics. Alex, where are you from? I am from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh, cool. So, and what's your family's background? Uh, you know, American. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, what food dishes do you guys have? Is there uh, food dishes is a word that I made up for the show. It's a big thing. Food-based tradition. Yeah. So I guess we got a we got a food dish, in. and so like every Christmas, my mom makes this egg casserole, and it's super delicious. And we've been doing it for years. So I mean, you know, it's uh, it's something I look forward to every year. So tell me a little bit about this casserole. I mean, there's eggs, but we're like, what is it like? What does it consist of? What's in it? All right, so she mixes egg and cottage cheese and milk and some other stuff and vegetables and cheese and deliciousness. And it just all works out every year. Bacon, you know, you need bacon in there. Bacon, eggs, and cheese, and then other stuff is always going to be delicious. So this is like a breakfast time food? Yeah, yeah. It's the breakfast, breakfast food. Totally. Most of my family is gluten-free though, so she makes the gluten-free version, but then she'll also make the gluten-full version of, uh, of uh, the egg casserole with some bread in it as well. Oh, whoa. That sounds fancy. So there's like the, <laughs> there's a two separate pans, one gluten, one egg. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You know. 
So, um, what? So, what's so special about it, though? There's it's breakfast and a casserole. Is this something you dream of? Do you have you tried to recreate it yourself? Yeah, I'm not gonna try to create recreate that. Like, it's my mom. She makes that, and it's delicious. If I try to make it, it's just gonna be bastardized. And like, I don't, can I say that? It's just gonna be a poor version of her version. Exactly. Yeah. So it would be substandard. Yes, it will be mediocre. In comparison. Exactly. It will. It will. It will be a, a a poor imitation of my mom's beautiful dish. Got it. Got it. No, I get it. And so, is there anything else on Christmas? Uh, you know, we got presents and stockings and uh, you know, Christmas music. Ah, I meant food wise. Oh, you know. Candy. I got another food edition. Yes, please tell us. All right, so Liz and I have been uh, making tacos all the time because it's cheap <laughs> and it's delicious uh -huh. and it's great for friends. Yes. And uh, so if we're having people over, it's just like the easiest, quickest thing to put together. Uh -huh. And we got this Mexican wholesale uh, place right down the street from us. So you can get like everything you need for tacos for like $20. There you go. Uh, yeah, totally. And it feeds a crowd. Exactly, like enough for like a week worth of food for like $20. Yeah. So it's like your fiesta food is... Yeah, yo, our food edition revolves around like Game of Thrones or Sunday night HBO shows. I love this. This is great. Yeah, totally. It's a lot better than Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Totally. The fiesta. I'm a big fan of a fiesta. I have an episode um, that's going to air soon. That, oh, no, it already aired. We have an episode that has already aired um, called Fiesta Peppers where it's... You do the taco treatment to the meat, and you put it, mix it with rice, and stuff it in peppers, and then melt the cheese on top. Oh my God, that is that's gonna be the new food edition. That's so funny. You just spoke to me about the new food edition. You should check out that recipe and yeah. add it to your food edition repertoire. Totally. Where can I find such a recipe? On my website, oh, yeah? in the kitchen with Caitlin.com. Yo, that sounds good. www. www. Woo. Lord. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. So um, now we got our garlic going, so all let's right. dump that in. And that's the last of all our uh, herbs and seasonings in our stuffing. All right. All of it in there. I love yeah. garlic. Oh, my God. It's I perfume. I'm going to <laughs> it, look out for it. In the Kitchen with Caitlin perfume line. Just don't do it before you take my class, okay? <laughs> it's going to be garlic. It's going to be bacon. <laughs> There's gonna be basil. <laughs> if you think of a favorite food smell you like, yeah, I want to make a perfume <laughs> out of it. All right, so we've we've combined it all beautifully. So now we're each gonna take a tiny little spoon. Hold on, great. And we're going to then um, take. We've greased this cookie sheet, and we're going to um, take a spoon. All right. And Can I move this over here? Yeah, please awesome. move it. Please do. Make it a little bit so, closer, easier yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, easy access. And then right, you cool. just pile it in. Um, you could pile it up. Like, we have about, I think, 24 mushrooms. So you could be a little modest. Or if you're really, like, ambitious, you can make a nice little mountain. I'm highly ambitious. And you can make a nice little mountain, <laughs> you know. For the littler buttonhole ones, I like to really pile it on because then it's, like, more exciting to bite into. But for the big, deep ones, you're getting, like, a ton of stuffing. And there you go. And you just place it on your cookie sheet. All right. All right. Good times, right? It is good times. It's going to be good times eating them. Oh, I know. I really that's know. that's what's going to happen. It's the best happen. time. It's that's, every, time. that's everyone's favorite part I is know. tasting. I hope it's know? everybody's favorite part. So far, our track record is excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's fun baking too. Baking and cooking, it's a good part. Yeah. But eating's always. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. The taste test has um, has been with, um, like I said, the track record's been pretty excellent that it's been everyone's favorite part of being on the show. Yeah. So, you know. I don't know. The cooking part, I'm really happy to do too. Exactly. And, and that, that's why it was exciting to have you on because I have to say, some people are a little lost. In the kitchen. I'm not gonna, I'm not knocking them because I love having them on as guests and sometimes it's fun to teach, but it's also fun to kind of just like know that you know how to cook garlic. Yeah. So once all your mushrooms are stuffed, you're gonna pop them in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes or depending on your oven when they start looking crusty at the top and golden brown. 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, if you can help me out and open the yeah, door to the oven, sure. that would be great. I feel like Vanna White. Right? Yeah. You're the Vanna White of mushrooms. Amazing. <laughs> what I've always wanted to be. All your dreams, right? <laughs> Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the episode, tasting. Yay! Yay! Okay, let's dig in. Okay. Pick your favorite one. This one is really cute. Yeah, it's a really cute little button size one. That's so good. Talking about my own, oh, it's so mm. good. No, it's good. <laughs> no. That's totally acceptable on In the Kitchen with Kate. Okay. Home. It's actually encouraged. Okay, yeah. well. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, which makes me, remind me of, um, Melissa, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. No so problem. Fun. And if you guys want to follow Melissa and find out when and where to stalk her in her classes, yes. check her out on Twitter and Instagram at I am Melissa Wolf with an E. And if you want to find out how to make these delectable little stuffed mushrooms, you can find out the ingredients on our vine at Kitchen W Caitlin. And if you want to come back next time, which I really hope you do, check us out and come back with your empty stomach.